Hello and welcome back to another section of this complete Angular course. So far, in our Angular application, we have worked with browsers only. We have not made any HTTP requests to the server. That means we stored all our data in browser's memory and not in any kind of database. For example, we stored our data in a data structure like array. This also means that whenever we restart the Angular application, all our data is gone and we are back to the initial state of the Angular application. But typically, when we create an Angular application, we communicate with backend server and store all our data in a database. Then, to use that data, we make an HTTP request to the server where the data is present and fetch data from the database and use it in our application. So, in this section, you will learn how Angular communicates with backend server with a database or an API. You will also learn how to send an HTTP request and how to transform the response which you receive according to your needs in your Angular application. So, how can we communicate with a database residing on a server in an Angular application? Well, one thing which you need to remember is that you do not connect Angular to a database directly. That means you do not enter database credentials into your Angular app or anything like that. That's because that would be highly insecure. Since Angular is a front-end JavaScript framework, everyone can inspect the code of your Angular application in the browser. And because of this, everyone can read your Angular code and with that, the database credentials you are using in the app. Okay, and because of this, we don't use credentials to connect to a database in an Angular app. And still it is possible to authenticate users in an Angular application, which we will learn later in this course. So the question is, if we don't connect directly to the database, what else we can do then? Because we certainly don't want to have a standalone Angular application, which is not connected to any database, right? So what we can do is, instead of directly connecting to a database, we can use an API. So we can send an HTTP request to the API. And this API will then fetch data from the database and it will send the response with the requested data. And then we can use that data in our Angular application. So here you can see we are not directly connecting to a database. Instead, we are communicating with an API. And this API can be a REST API or a GraphQL API or any other kind of API. In this course, we will work with REST APIs, which is the most common form of API you can work with. Now, you can think of an API almost like a website. An API also has a URL and based on the URL we type, it sends us some data. But here, the data is not HTML like we get in the normal websites. Instead, an API sends a JSON data, which can later be used in the application. Also remember that, Angular is used to create front-end applications. We do not use Angular to create APIs. For that, we use server-side languages like PHP or Node. But we can use Angular to communicate with APIs. Then, the API will have the code to interact with the database like fetching the data, deleting the data, storing the data, etc. Now, in this section, we are not going to write such a backend from scratch since it's way beyond the scope of this course and totally not Angular's job. But I will show you how to use a free dummy backend, which could of course can be replaced by any real backend you have for sending and receiving requests and responses. Okay. Now, before we start sending requests to the server and work with responses, it is important to understand how HTTP request and response work. An HTTP request is made up of some core parts, which is important to understand. Once we understand it, it will be easy to work with HTTP requests and responses in Angular. So the most important part of an HTTP request is the URL to which we are sending the request. It is also called as an API endpoint and it is something like yourdomain.com slash product slash ID. The exact path here depends on the API you are interacting with. Now, while communicating with the RESTful APIs, it's not just the URL which matters, but also the HTTP verbs which we are using. HTTP verbs define which kind of request you want to send to that endpoint. We have different type of HTTP verbs. For example, get to get the data from the server, post to send the data to the server, put to update the data, delete to delete the data and so on. 
So basically, the HTTP verbs makes it clear whether you want to send some data to the server or you want to fetch the data or you want to delete the data and so on. Okay. Now, along with URLs and HTTP verbs, we often need to set some additional metadata for the requests which we are sending to the API. These metadata are called as headers of the request. Now, these headers are kind of optional because some default headers will be appended to the request for you by the browser and by the Angular. But you can also specify your own headers, which we will look into closely in our coming lectures. Then, for some of the HTTP verbs, we can also add a body to the request. And the body contains the data which we want to send to the server. For example, if you are creating a POST request to create a new piece of data on the server, we can attach that data in the body of the request. For example, let's say we want to add a new product in the database. In that case, we send the product details with the request in the request body. Now, the request body can be set on POST, PUT and PATCH requests. So this was a very high level overview on HTTP requests. In the next lecture, we will set up a dummy database to work with HTTP requests in Angular. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.